Hello, this is Super User. My name is Subahudimu Matapeng. I'm a developer advocate with the Node, and in this video, we are going to take a closer look at block storage. Cloud providers such as Linode allow us to store data in two forms, either as block storage or as object storage. In a previous video, we went into detail about object storage and how we can use object storage to store the static data for our application. We talked about how object storage is ideal for storing data that's in smaller sizes but in huge quantities. In this video, we are going to look at the other form of data storage, and that is block storage. How block storage works, what it's used for, its advantages, and some of the use cases for block storage. But before we get started, please remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell button so that you can get notified whenever we upload amazing new content. So what is block storage? Block storage is one of the oldest and simplest forms of data storage. It uses a type of data cloud storage that's similar to block devices, like the hard drive on your PC. Block storage stores data in fixed size chunks that we refer to as blocks. A single block can house a portion of a file. And that is because many of the use cases for block storage is storing data that is so huge that a single block will simply not be big enough. So we actually would have to split a file amongst multiple blocks. Each block has a unique identifying address, but these addresses are not human friendly. So the application accessing our block storage will actually need to have a file system installed in it. In the cases where a file is stored across multiple different blocks, our application will have to make SC, SI calls, and it's these calls that will map the addresses to the correct blocks. Our application will then retrieve these blocks and organize them to form that single file. To house and manage the different blocks that form a single unit, we use what is called a volume. A volume will get attached to our application, and our application will access the block storage through the volume. A volume can be attached, detached, or attached to a completely different application. So they're quite flexible in that case. We now have an understanding of what block storage is and how it works. We'll now take a look at some of the advantages of block storage, specifically on the Linode platform. The first advantage is that block storage is actually really fast. That is because we attach volumes to the computing instance that accesses that volume. This means that very little time is spent transferring the data from your computing instance to your volume, making them much faster than object storage. The next advantage is that on block storage, we can actually make incremental date changes to the data that we've stored. This means that when we want to make updates to our data, we actually don't have to completely remove that data and add new data. We can actually just make updates to it. And if you are on the Linode platform, your volume gets replicated three times. This means that your data will have high fault tolerance and high availability. Okay, cool. So those are just some of the few advantages of block storage. Now we are going to take a look into some of the use cases for block storage. The first use case for block storage is actually one that's quite popular, and that is using block storage to store databases. So if you want to store the data on your database, a good solution is to use block storage. Block storage is really fast and has high read or write outputs. That makes it ideal to store the data for your database because speed for a database is really important. The next use case for block storage is to back up your data. It cannot be said how important data backup is. And because Linode's block storages are replicated three times, your data will actually be safe and backed up. Another use for block storage is to give your containers persistent storage. Like other applications, applications running on containers could also benefit from having fast persistent storage that block storage gives you. This means that as your containers go up and down, the data that they use will persist throughout. And that wraps up our video on block storage. I hope that you learned quite a bit about block storage, what it is, how it works, and most importantly, how it differs from object storage. I hope that this allows you to make a decision for your company about when to use which form of data cloud storage. It would actually be cool if you could actually use 
both object storage and club block storage for your application. So you could use object storage to store the files or the images, profile pictures and content for your application. And then you could actually use block storage to store the database for your application. So the two could actually work hand in hand. It's important though to know when to use which one. My name is Soahudu Matapeng. I'm a developer advocate with Linode and I hope that you enjoyed this video and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. And if you haven't yet, now is a really good time to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.